Hello friends, I am Larry Hutton and this is Limitless Life and I am just rejoicing today because it's a day the Lord hath made and we can rejoice and be glad in it. And I found out even when all hell breaks loose in our lives, we can let all heaven break loose in our lives with thanksgiving and praise and worship and it is written coming out of our mouths will cause all heaven to break loose. And so right in the middle of all hell breaking loose, all heaven breaks loose and guess what? Heaven is more powerful than hell. God is more powerful than Satan. Light is more powerful than darkness. Oh man, I tell you, we are on the winning team. <laughs> I'm so thrilled and glad I'm on God's side and he's on mine. God is not mad at me. He's not counting up my sins, holding anything against me. He laid them all on Jesus did the same thing for you. I've heard so many people, yeah, but I just so feel so guilty and I just so messed up in my life. And so, no, 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 no. Listen, if you accept Jesus, all of your sins, past, present, future, are all forgiven. Somebody got mad one time and said, how can you say all your future sins are forgiven? Well, my friend, you better hope all your future sins are forgiven because if all your future sins were for not forgiven, then none of your sins have been forgiven because when Jesus bore your sins, all of your sins were in the future. <laughs> yeah, all and every sin you've ever committed since you were born till now were all future 2,000 years ago when Jesus bore your sins and forgave your sins. <laughs> Hallelujah. So anyway, let's get back into our series that we started over. Uh, this is actually the end of our fifth week. Uh, so five complete series through today. We'll finish our fifth week on, on what we've titled Believe for Great things. God wants you and me believing Him. God wants you and I to believe or use our faith for great things in our life. Why mediocre lives? Why just barely get by lives? Why just, okay, I just have enough of this and that's enough. Why? Why not believe God for great things and, and take yourself out of the realm of possibility when it's just you into the realm of impossibility when you got God involved? Because with God, all things are possible. So why not believe Him for all things? <laughs> Glory to God. So let's get in. This is going to be our 25th lesson. Our, our, one of our foundation texts that we've been using is over in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, which says to look to Jesus because He's the beginning and end of our faith. He's the starter and completer of our faith. He's the author and finisher of our faith, however, depending what translation you read. But then the next verse in verse 3 says, uh, Consider him uh, lest you become mentally weary and end up making uh, the wrong decisions. In other words, a decision to quit and give up. And that's what happens. If we don't look to Jesus and consider Jesus, our faith will get weary and it will shut down. And then we won't have great things happening in our lives. And listen, when it talks about looking to Jesus, uh, Hebrews 12, 2, and then consider him, Hebrews 12, 3, it's talking about looking to the word. You and I have to look to the word. We can't look and physically see Jesus. Uh, we can't physically hear Jesus. Now, Jesus put his spirit in us so that by the spirit, then he will speak to us and show us things to come and reveal things that have been spoken to us about Jesus. But that means you got to get in the word. And we already spent a lot of time uh, showing us that the word, the word of God, which has been written down for you and me. Thank God it's been written down. But the word of God and Jesus are one. And yet he's got both names. And we discussed a lot of scriptures that show all that, why it's so important for you and I to look at the Word and get in the uh, epistles, the New Testament, the better covenant established on better promises, why the New Testament has replaced the Old Testament. We, we need to look at the Word. And when we do that, uh, we're actually looking to Jesus and we're considering Him. And so we've actually looked at 20 things so far. If you haven't been with us, it'd be worth your time to go back and listen to them. Just, I'm, just, I'm just talking in the last week or so, we've, we've discussed 20 things, why faith is so important. Now, all the weeks leading up to that, we discussed a lot of other things about faith. But uh, we're talking about believing God or using our faith for great things uh, and why it's so important to do so. Why should I believe God for great things? Why is faith so important? Well. 
Uh, you can't please God without it. You can't be saved without it. You can't be filled with the Spirit without it. You can't live the Christian life without it. You can't walk the Christian walk without it. You can't stand fast without faith. You can't receive the promises of God without faith. You can't fight a good fight without faith. You can't walk in victory and overcome the world and all the problems without faith. You can't resist the devil without faith. You can't stop Satan's fiery darts without faith. You can't receive God's wisdom without faith. You can't walk free from sin without faith. You can't finish your course and run your race without faith. Uh, faith will bring healing to a sick person's body. Faith will cause miracles to happen. Faith will bring deliverance from evil spirits and demonic activity. Faith will bring uh, forgiveness to you so that you can receive God's forgiveness and even forgive yourself. Faith enables you to forgive others. Uh, faith will bring comfort to others. Faith will cause all your needs to be met. And 22, faith will cause you to prosper. So that's the 22 things we've already looked at just in the last few days. Uh, why faith is so important. And so obviously, but just, just a few of those, we can quickly see, man, if all those script, oh, those are all scriptures, right? You and I have been actually going over scriptures to see all of those things that are true. And so uh, let's just, let's pick up with number 23. Faith will bring your hopes and desires into reality. Things you hope for, things that you would desire to come to pass and you'd like to see in your life. Faith will bring those to, uh, to where they actually happen. Uh, we saw in Matthew 21, 22, I quoted it, we didn't turn there, but 20, Matthew 21, 22, look at it. It says, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, so here's the faith part, you will what? Receive. Now that's an important word because it's showing you God's not going to just do things just to do things. He wants you to believe Him for them. So if He's going to release things, you have to receive them in order for Him to release them. That's how you got saved and that's how you're going to receive everything. By grace are you saved through what? Faith. So God's grace is released to those that receive it by faith. So you, you couldn't have gotten saved. You could not have become born again or what the Bible calls born from above. You could not have been, uh, become a child of God without faith in what Jesus already did for you so that grace is released. When you believe Jesus died on the cross and rose again, that He's alive and well, and you confessed Him as your Lord and Savior, God's grace flowed and you became righteous and all sin, past, present, and future, was wiped away. Wow. So, whatever things you ask in prayer, look at this verse now, Matthew 21, 22, whatever things you ask in prayer, that's just, when you say ask in prayer, you're just, you're talking about talking to God. You don't have to get so religious, pray, oh, I got to pray and use that word pray or prayer as though it's some real spiritual term or something. Listen, prayer just means you're having a conversation with God. You're listening to Him. He's talking to you. You're talking to Him. Whatever things you talk to God about, believing you will receive. So evidently, by the context, he must be referring to things that you're asking him for, something that you need or something that you want or desire. You're asking. He said, you shall receive. If what? If you use faith. Believing if you use faith. In fact, go over to Hebrews chapter 11 because we, we're, we're talking about this number 20 thing, 23 reason, the 23rd reason why uh, it's, faith is important. Faith will bring your hopes and your desires into reality. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. I said faith will bring your hopes into reality and your desires into reality. So faith is the substance. You could read it this way. Some translations do. Faith gives substance to what? To the things that you're hoping, you're, you're expecting. You've got a confident expectation, but faith brings that hope into reality. So it says faith is the substance. So if you're hoping for something, there's no substance there. But faith causes what you're hoping for to come to pass. And then what you actually have now in your physical possession is the substance. Faith caused that. 
Of course, now we, we know it's grace that released, well, that was released by God that brought it to pass because faith releases grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you don't see. Well, you're, you're believing for something that you haven't seen it come to pass yet. You can't see that uh, maybe it's healing for your body. Maybe it's finances to buy a new car because your, your old rattle trap is not worth a dime anymore. So whatever it is, you know, you need something. And, uh, or you have a hope or, re, or a, a desire to have something to bless somebody else. Maybe it's a desire because you, you, you might... You know, somebody sent a large offering before just to Larry Hutton Ministries and said, we just love your realness. We love that you make the word believable. Uh, you make it so simple and easy. So maybe you have a desire to bless our ministry. Maybe you have a desire there's a missionary you know about in another country and you would just like to send them this, this over-the-top offering that would just flat put them over. I mean, it would just flat cause them to say, man, we got enough money for years because of this. Yeah, God would love to do that through you. So maybe that's a hope or desire. Well, faith is the evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith will bring substance or it'll be the evidence of things not seen. Evidence would be like, let's say you bought a piece of property without ever seeing the property and then they gave you the title and you held up the title. You know what that title is? That's evidence. That's evidence that you own the property right there. So even though you've never seen the property, you've never walked on it yet, you have it. And you have proof that you have it and that is your title. That's what it's saying that your faith is. Your faith is the proof that you already have what you're believing for. So you start thanking God. That's what faith does. Faith is a rest. Faith thanks God for what I've just believed God for, Act, ask God for. I've got it. Thank you, Lord. I've got it. So my point is faith will bring your hopes and your desires into reality because faith says, that's why you've heard people, you may have heard somebody say, faith always ends in the glad confession, it's mine, I have it now. It's mine. I already got it. It's already, I already got it. My faith is the evidence that I've got it. Uh -huh. Yep, I asked God, so I got it. Hallelujah. All right, number 24. Faith. We're talking about reasons why believing God for great things is so important. Why, is, why faith is so important. Number 24. Faith will remove obstacles in your life. Let's turn over to Mark chapter 11 and verse 22 and 23. Mark 11, 22 and 23 says, have faith in God. So we know it's talking about faith. In other words, believe God. And if you're going to have faith in God, since he's a big God, then why wouldn't you believe for big things, right? Yeah. Have faith in God. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he says shall be done. He'll have whatever he says. So notice verse 22, have faith in God. And then verse 23, whosoever shall say. So it's very interesting how he says, have faith. And then he starts talking about using that faith. So he says, whosoever shall say to this mountain. And when he's talking about a mountain here, he's, even though he's using a, a physical mountain as a reference, he's referring to the mountains of hardships or the mountains of financial problems or the mountains of sickness or the mount, whatever mountains in life, talking about tests and trials and hardships, he's, he's saying uh, this mountain. And I'll get into proving what he's talking about in a, another program in the future here. We'll actually cover this whole passage. Why in verse 22 did Jesus say, have faith in God? Well, you have to read all the scriptures up, leading up to that. We'll do that in another program. But right now we're saying, he says, have faith in God. Then he says, now use the faith of God when he says, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, not doubt in his heart, but believe those things he says shall, uh, shall be done. He shall have whatever he says. So the mountains represent the obstacles in our life. And Jesus said, you can remove them with your faith. Have faith in God. And of course, we know Ephesians 2, 8, it's faith that God gave us. Everything, the grace, the salvation, the faith, it's all gift from God. And so um, 
we can remove every obstacle uh, with our faith. But this verse not only shows us have and use faith in God, but it shows us how to activate faith. How is faith activated? Well, have faith in God for whosoever shall say. Now, don't you like the word whosoever because it's including you and me. Anybody that's watching is a whosoever. So don't, don't think, well, you know, Larry could believe for great things. I sure wish I could. No, don't, don't wish you could. Jesus says right here, have faith and go ahead and use it. Start speaking to your mountains. See, most people talk about their mountains, but they don't speak to their mountain. This says, have faith in God and then whosoever shall speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. It didn't say talk to God about the mountain. Oh God, help me get rid of this mountain. Oh God, would you te please take this sickness from me? Oh God, would you please do that for me? And that, no, he said speak to the mountain. Now he's not talking about mountains of wisdom and mountain of blessing. He's talking about things that are standing in your pathway, standing in between you and the provision of God. Because we already read verses when God talks about using your faith for wisdom. So we use faith to receive from God, right? So we don't speak to those mountains. We speak to the mountains that are trying to hinder us from walking in the blessing of God, right? So that's what it's talking about here. So this shows us how faith is activated. And like I said, I'm going to cover this whole passage uh, in another program. But sufficient to say this shows us faith is released in words. Just like we found out God's words have faith in every one of them. And that when we all of a sudden hear something we've never heard before, even though we have faith in us for anything that individual faith, like faith for healing or faith for money or faith, we hear a scripture that we've never heard or never understood before, and all of a sudden we have faith for that particular thing that we never had faith for before. So faith is activated and it's activated by words. So just like God spoke words, released his faith, you and I speak words to release our faith. And that's what activates our faith. So... Um, faith will remove obstacles in your life was number 24. Then number 25, faith gives you access into all of God's grace. So we know we got by grace or we saved through faith, but now we, even after we get saved, there's more grace that we can access. Uh, or I could say that we have access to. So look at Romans chapter 5, verse number 2. Well, let's start in verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom, and that verse 2, through Jesus, in other words. Remember, we are looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, and we're considering Him, lest we get wearied and, and faint in our minds. So through Him, Jesus, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So this says, through Jesus, we have access by faith into the grace that we abide in or that we live in or that we're already standing in. Wow. So that means if we have access into the grace, then that means there's more grace than just saving grace. Yeah. So we had, we got, we got access into righteousness grace, right? Grace that made us righteous. Well, guess what? There's more grace. There's healing grace that'll make you well in your body. There's financial grace that'll set you free and get you out of debt totally and give you more money so you have plenty to give away. And there's this grace and that. There's grace, marital grace. There's uh, mental, emotional grace. There's grace for every area of our lives. That's why he says, listen, you've been justified by faith, verse 1, so we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace that we're already standing in. We're living in this grace. We're abiding in this grace. So we have access to any grace necessary for our lives. I think that's so cool. In fact, that says the same thing as, as Hebrews chapter 4. Let's jump over to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 and we're going to look at verse 16. 
if you read verse starting, you really do need to. Maybe we'll do that in another program as well. But if you read like verse 2, verse 2 says that we have to mix our faith uh, with the word if we want to be blessed. And then verse 3 says faith is a rest. I'm, I'm going to lead down to verse 16 here. Verse 10 says when we enter that rest, we cease from our own works. In other words, uh, we're looking to Jesus we're look, remember, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So we're looking to Jesus' works. That's what our faith does. Verse 14 says to hold fast our profession of faith. So that's the words that we're speaking. We're going to keep speaking the word even when it doesn't look like it's working. That's why, that's why it tells you to hold fast. Hold fast the profession of your faith because of our high priest Jesus. And then look at verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of what? Grace, remember, we're, we, we have access because we're living in that grace. We're abiding. We're standing in that grace. Therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hmm. So faith gives you boldness. Remember all the faith it talked about up to verse 16. So then it says, let us therefore, in other words, based on that you have faith and that you're resting in him and in his grace and his works, then come boldly in faith to the throne of grace. Remember we just read, we have Romans chapter five, verse uh, two and three. We have access by faith into this grace that we're already standing in. So come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and what? Find grace to help in time of need so we can use faith to receive mercy. Blind Bartimaeus did. We'll look at that another program. Remember though he called out and Jesus said, according to your faith be it unto you. So his faith received mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now I love this verse right here. It says we can come boldly. It does not say timidly. It does not say fearfully. It says boldly. And if you look it up, it's talking about coming to God as though sin never existed in your life. It's talking about coming to God as though He sees you righteous. It's talking about coming to God as though you have complete confidence and you completely rely on Him that He loves you and He's got your back and He's only going to do good to you. That's the kind of boldness he's talking about here. Come boldly to God. Wow. That you may obtain. So guess what you're going to do? You're going to receive. So that means this mercy and this grace doesn't just flow just because God wants it to. If it did, every person on the planet would be saved and every person on the planet would be healed and every person on the planet would be financially independent and no more debt. And every, I mean, that's God's will for every one of His kids. And yet it doesn't happen just because He wants it. It happens because we receive that grace and then grace. Our faith is a positive response to what Jesus has already done and grace flows not based on our performance, based on what He's already done and we believe Him for it. Praise God. So, let us come boldly to the throne of what? Grace, to obtain mercy and find what? Grace. Now, this is written to Christians. We're going to find grace to help us. And notice the last four words, in time of need. So, that doesn't exclude any area of our life, does it? No. In, in time of need to me would, would mean, okay, you know, I have a marital need right now. I have a need that I need some grace for to be able to treat my wife right or, or do this for my wife or whatever. Uh, or, you know what, in time of need, maybe I have some symptoms attacking my body and I need some strength and healing to get rid of this pain or this growth or this whatever that's attacking my body. And I need grace to help in that time of need. Or maybe, you know what, boy, I'll tell you what, right now it is tight financially. We need some money to take care of this bill and pay this and get our car fixed, whatever it is you're going through. There's grace to help in time of need. That's powerful. That is so powerful. There's grace to help me in this time of need, to help you in this time of need. No matter what you're going through, it's a time of need, isn't it? If you're going through something physically, financially, emotionally. 
Maybe it's that time of month or that time of year or that time of taxes or that time or that time or that time, whatever's adding stress or, or discouragement or depression or anger or whatever emo negative emotions coming against you. That's a time of need. Guess what? There's grace. There is mental grace. There is emotional grace. There is what I call feeling grace. In other words, grace that affects your feelings the way you feel. You can partake of his peace and joy and his self-control. All three of those that I just mentioned are fruit of the Spirit inside of you that the Holy Ghost brought with Him when He moved inside of you. Man. So this verse is actually telling me that, that our faith, I'm telling you that our faith is what gives us boldness to come to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and find grace to help every single time we face a need. There's grace. There's grace. That's why God told the Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. All you need is in my grace. I've already put it all in Jesus. So when you look unto Jesus and you consider Jesus, that's using faith, the author and finisher of our faith, you're believing God, you're believing Jesus in all of His finished work, then guess what happens? grace is imparted. And grace is what empowers you to be what you can't be on your own. Do what you can't do on your own. Go where you can't go on your own. Our faith in His grace is what makes the impossible possible. Wow, we'll pick up here next program. <laughs> I'm so glad we're getting time to spend in the Word of God together because it's just empowering us to believe God for great things. Thanks for supporting us financially. Thanks for praying for us. And until next time, this is Larry Hutton letting you know I love you. Have a Jesus-filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. With your own words, you can release the power of life that will bring health to your body. God's healing grace is released through faith, and faith is released through what you say. Your healing is in your mouth. God wants you to be whole, well, and healthy. But if you have not heard his word on it, how can you have faith to call on him as your healer? These 52 Declare It cards have a healing scripture from God's word on one side and a corresponding declaration of faith, which you can speak about yourself on the other. Hearing God's word concerning your healing will build your faith to walk through life in complete confidence that every sickness or disease that ever attacks you must depart. To order your prescription for health declare it cards, go to LarryHutton.org or call us at 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org or you can call 888-887-WORD.